In my time in Red Mountain, given the ages that had passed since my rebirth into the fitting role of godhood, I would lose track of the days where I would ponder. What if things had been different? No, not different, as in what if Nerevar had not betrayed me to the false gods of the tribunal, nor even what if Kagranak and the other Dwemer had considered our point of view in the deliberations leading to the conflict of Red Mountain. No, I dared to dream and ask in my inner thoughts, what if I had stayed the course of my apprenticeship in that bakery off the beaten path outside of Gila Ode? No one would assume it of me, of course, given my position bestowed upon me in House Dagoth and my subsequent rise to Lord High Chancellor of the esteemed court of my lineage. Such, however, is life, and it was true I enjoyed the simple pleasures of learning to make sweet rolls, artisanal breads, and on the rare occasion the apple fritter. Given this was almost 4,000 years ago, the advances we have today in culinary and baking technology were not as far along, but the techniques of that time were a humble affair. Each twist and fold in the more advanced pastries as much an act of artistry as they were business. Such maneuvers delighted the younger Voron Dagoth. But alas, my time in the old shop would be cut short by the affairs of Almalexia, Vivek, and Sothasil. Yet even as the affairs of the First Council carried out, I would find myself making trips out to the old bakery when time permitted. Though as the complex weaving of fate and intrigue among the Council and the growing tension of the then Dwemer people, these trips would be rarer until finally I would be unable to make my pilgrimages there at all, save twice more in my later years. The penultimate visit came when news had come via one of my couriers that the old head baker, a chimer by the name of Irerlin Dorothy, had finally passed. Unfortunately, as noted by the ever-diminishing quality of the goods I'd partake of in my scant visits, his successors had not taken to heart the true meaning of the old man's words when imparting one's spirit into their work. No, it was not magic in the traditional sense, but the workings of the heart. No puns intended. Ah, 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 ah. I forget myself. It was the magic of pride in a job done well. It's true, the bakery could make breads faster than they used to, but the folds in the pastries, the glaze on the sweet rolls, all of it had sacrificed quality to the impertinence of quantity. The coming war for Red Mountain, however, would remedy this in the most doleful fashion, as a general of the First Council misunderstood a request to pick up twelve of their sweet rolls as twelve heads to display and to roll. How that misunderstanding came about I could never fathom, but lo and behold, the old shop was reduced to rubble and the last successor of old Dorothy had been put to the sword. It is those ironies in life that had I simply stuck to my convictions earlier in life, would I have exchanged the glory of ascendance and splendor that is Dagoth Ur, but simply became an apprentice in Dorothy's footsteps, would I have been happy? I believe the answer is yes, for I can see that young Vorin kneading the dough across the vast chasms of time and instances, yet it is a path I cannot walk myself, for no bakery in Vardenfell would ever let a man with my fingernails make dough for public consumption. Would I trim them to recapture that glory? Perhaps, but they are immaculately done by the Ash Vampires, and to sacrifice their hard work at this point in my ventures would simply be an insult to our progress and dedication to the Sixth House and Tribe unmourned.